This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today with news from Hyundai, which officially revealed the performance-oriented Ioniq 5N on Wednesday, just ahead of its official LA Auto Show debut. While you might be forgiven for thinking the Ioniq 5N would just be a Hyundai-badged version of the already powerful Kia EV6 GT, think again, because the Ioniq 5N adds even more power to the mix, with an always available 448 kilowatts, 601 horsepower at the wheels, as well as its N-Grin boost mode that pushes that output up to 478 kilowatts, that's 641 horses. It has a three and a quarter second sprint time, specially designed suspension, steering, and a drift mode, as well as, for those who want it, a simulated gearbox. From one type of quick to another now, with a study into the EV charging times of available EVs from Edmunds that shows if you want the quickest charging vehicle on the market today, buy a Kia or a Hyundai. While many automakers like to pin their charging prowess on the peak power level their cars can achieve, Edmunds tests highlights that peak charging doesn't always result in the quickest overall charging time, choosing instead to highlight the number of miles of range you can achieve in a theoretical hour of charging. While this also has some flaws, it does allow more efficient cars to perform better, meaning that different versions of the Hyundai Ioniq 6, Kia EV6, Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Porsche Taycan can top the leaderboard, with the Tesla Model 3 in 10th place and my F-150 Lightning Lariat extended range all the way down there in 34th place. Late last week, Polestar held its inaugural Polestar Day in LA. And while we didn't get an invite, last week we promised you more information on what was revealed there. In addition to a collaboration with Storedot that will see the two firms build an extreme fast charging prototype for the Polestar 5, Polestar confirmed that it would be opening a new production facility in South Korea in 2025, where it will make Polestar 4 models for the North American market. Additionally, Polestar has signed an agreement with Mobileye to bring LiDAR capabilities to Polestar 4 with a view to eventually switching on autonomous driving functionality in the future. Finally, Polestar has officially launched a pilot virtual power plant similar to Tesla's virtual power plant for Powerwall to enable V2G functionality in Polestar 3. With Tesla's Cybertruck due to begin deliveries in just under two weeks, there's a lot of attention focused on exactly what buying a Cybertruck will entail. And over last weekend, a purchase contract on Tesla's website seemed to suggest it wanted its early customers to agree to not sell their Cybertrucks for a whole year or face being sued for upwards of 50,000 US dollars. Tesla hasn't officially responded to the leak, but it's worth noting that the terminology was previously present in Tesla's purchase contract now appears to have vanished. It's not clear, based on what I can tell, if Tesla has actually changed its mind or simply removed the clause from its publicly viewable contract. But it's also worth noting that either way, Tesla wouldn't be the first automaker to try and stop people flipping its vehicles for profit. At one point, Volvo was famous for its sturdy station wagons and to date hasn't even produced a minivan. But that's now changed with the official launch of the EM90. Being marketed as a premium MPV, the EM90 is based on the same platform as the Zika 009 and it's unlikely to ever go on sale outside of China. It packs in seating for six, a 21-speaker sound system and more screens than most people have in their homes. Unlike more globally marketed models, the EM90's powertrain is pretty basic, with a 116 kilowatt hour battery pack paired with a rear-wheel drive 200 kilowatt motor working together to produce a claimed 459 miles, 738 kilometers of range on the Chinese test cycle. That said, said test cycle is, as some analysts point out, about 35% more optimistic than EPA's test figures. We have been waiting for a truly affordable electric vehicle for what feels like forever, and every time an automaker gets close to bringing the cost of a model down, they tend to cancel it and announce something more expensive instead. 
But during a conference in Germany this week, Volkswagen CEO Oliver Blum confidently said that he believes it will be possible to produce an EV priced around €20,000 by the latter part of this decade. While the company is already full steam ahead with its plans to produce its ID2, an all-electric city hatch with a price tag of closer to €25,000, Blum said that advances in battery pack construction, including cell-to-pack designs, combined with economies of scale, will make EVs far more affordable. Earlier this year, Mercedes-Benz became the first automaker to get official approval to operate its Level 3 driver assistance feature, DrivePilot, in specific conditions in specific markets. Now BMW is set to join it, with the announcement that its own Level 3 driver assistance system, called BMW Personal Pilot L3, will go live in Germany from next spring. Like the Mercedes-Benz system, BMW Personal Pilot L3 will come with some pretty specific operating restrictions, namely that you won't be able to use it at speeds above 60 km per hour and you'll only be able to use it on divided lane highways. But unlike other driver assistance features on the market today, including Tesla's full self-driving beta, BMW's and Mercedes-Benz's systems allow for full driver distraction while it's operational. When U.S. electric bus specialist Proterra entered into bankruptcy protection earlier this year, the industry held its breath, partly because of the importance of Proterra in the electric bus and truck world. And when I was in Washington, D.C. a few weeks ago, I heard some interesting rumours about who would be buying Proterra's assets. And now we know for sure. The Volvo Group. With a winning bid of 210 million US dollars, Volvo Group will take over the battery side of Proterra's business, pending regulatory approval, of course. This is great news for both commercial and municipal bus operators using Proterra buses on their existing routes today, but it's also great news for the multitude of companies that rely on Proterra built battery packs to power their own mid and heavy duty electric vehicles. General Motors' troubled autonomous vehicle division crews just cannot get a break these days. From losing its permits to operate in California to ongoing investigations, cruisers' woes so no sign of stopping. This week, an article from The Intercept made things ten times worse, claiming that it had seen internal documentation from crews that admits its autonomous vehicles have problems detecting children and, quote, may not exercise additional care, end quote, around them. Using internal test data from simulated tests, it even looks as if Cruiser's software was at risk of actually hitting a child in the real world, although luckily no such accident has ever taken place. It shows yet again that while semi-autonomous driving might be a holy grail for some, it's a lot harder than it actually looks. Renault held its Capital Markets Day this week, or rather, its electric vehicle arm Ampere did. And during it, the company laid out some of its plans for the future of democratising EV ownership. This included promising a total of seven electric models developed by Ampere in the marketplace by 2031. This includes Megane E-Tech, Scenic E-Tech, Renault 5, Renault 4 and three new models. One of those will be the all-electric rebirth of the Renault Twingo, a small city-friendly runabout that Renault says will retail from under €20,000. While Renault didn't reveal much in the way of specs, it's said that the car is targeting an efficiency of 6.2 miles per kilowatt hour, will seat four, and will be Renault's answer to an electric Japanese K-car. Before we get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are, and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get charging at home. So follow the link below and start that journey today. We've eagerly been following the progress of Candela's first passenger carrying ferry, the P-12, ever since it was first revealed. This week, the company confirmed that said craft, the world's first electric hydrofoil passenger ferry, has completed all of its necessary pre-production testing and is now entering into series production. With a choice of three different variants, Candela says that the P-12 is not only price compatible with internal combustion engine hydrofoil ferries, but thanks to speed limit exemptions in its native Sweden, will be twice as quick to take on inaugural routes. With fuel costs expected to be 10% of the fossil fuel variant, the first Candela P-12 ferries will enter into service in Stockholm in early 2024. And finally... 
It's a very sad fact that the average size of a new vehicle has grown significantly over the last half century, with some of today's vehicles dwarfing their predecessors on the road. These larger vehicles are often sold under the fallacy that they're safer for everyone, but the reality is that for other road users and the world we live in, they're anything but, with increased pedestrian fatalities and emissions when compared to smaller vehicles. So, in an attempt to discourage people from driving massive SUVs, Paris has just proposed a new rule that would allow it to charge large, non-commercial vehicles, namely SUVs, more for parking in its city. And yes, that rule would also include electric Metric SUVs, anything over 1.6 metric tons for ICE or plug-in, and anything over 2 metric tons that is battery electric. And you know, frankly, I support this idea. What about you? And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it's time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. I promise, it's super easy to make the switch, and when you do, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. Thank you for putting up with me being slightly distracted today. I came off my motorbike last weekend, and so my legs are not in a happy place. And so I'm aware that I'm not up to my usual standard. Also, it's the US Thanksgiving next week, so there won't be a usual weekend roundup show. But don't forget to check out our other awesome content, including the latest videos from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. Whatever you enjoy next, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.